Okay, another month has passed, so let's take a look at the solar and energy stats for June. If you'd like a reminder of my system, take a look in the description or watch the video linked up in the corner here. So starting with the Give Energy report for the month of June, you can see that we generated 804 kilowatt hours and we consumed 360 kilowatt hours. So uh, quite a big difference between generation and consumption, which is excellent because that means we have plenty to export. Our best day was the 2nd of June and we generated just shy of 40 kilowatt hours, 39.02 kilowatt hours. I was uh, gutted not to hit 40, but there you go, I can't have it all. And here's what the generation profile looked for that day. This is what I call a fondant fancy day um, because it looks a little bit like a slice through a fondant fancy cake. Uh, you get this bump in the middle and a sort of plateau at either side before it drops away. Now these little notches here are because we've got some trees uh, to our east and west which shades our two arrays, east and west arrays. But that doesn't take out too much of the total generation for the day so uh, I'm not too bothered about that and I like having the trees around anyway. So because we have an east-west split array that is uh, exactly equal, 3.4 kilowatt peak on each side, we get this interesting pattern where the east array starts generating first thing in the morning, um, goes up to nearly 3 kilowatts, not quite the 3.4 maximum, um, before that dips away and then that's picked up by the west array, which then again peaks up near 3 kilowatts in the afternoon. And obviously combined that gives you this interesting fondant fancy type shape. For the rest of the month we didn't quite hit the heady heights of 39 kilowatt hours but I'm pretty pleased with the uh, total 804 is a little bit more than we would typically expect, I'll show you that in a second. And you can see that in our consumption chart there's a week here where our consumption was extremely low and that's because we went on holiday. These two big spikes here and here are when we charged the car. And if I scroll further down you can see our daily battery and grid usage. And because uh, we're on Intelligent Octopus Flux uh, Octopus are controlling our battery so it's charging um, over, overnight now rather than during the day and then um, obviously exporting during the peak period from 4 until 7. So that means we're actually pulling a lot more from the grid now, um, 551.5 kilowatt hours. It was a lot lower than that uh, in uh, May because most of the charging was done uh, during the day when it was uh, charging from, the battery was charging from solar rather than from the grid. So actually our grid import was a lot higher uh, in June than it was in May. But our total export was also extremely high because all of the solar that would have gone into the battery was also being exported. And then of course the battery is then being exported as well during that peak period, which means that we had a very high export, but also a very high import. But that's fine because it all works out because of the way that Intelligent Flux works. And I'll show you that in a little bit. And if I scroll all the way back up to the top to show the energy flow diagram, this uh, confirms what I was saying a second ago. A lot of the battery is now being charged from the grid instead of from solar. So the battery is almost exclusively being charged from the grid. Only a tiny bit is coming from solar. And all, almost all of the solar is getting exported back to the grid. Very little of it is going to the home because we didn't need that much. And then of course most of the battery is then also going out to the grid. Very little is actually being used to support the home. But once again that's all fine and as expected in the way that Intelligent Flux works. So how does 804 kilowatt hours compare to what we would expect? Well it was slightly above the PVGIS estimate as you can see here but well within the plus and minus one standard deviation. You can see that last year we had a really good generation of 877 kilowatt hours which was above the plus uh, one standard deviation line there which um, means that last year was um, fairly exceptional, not uh, extraordinarily exceptional but still quite a lot higher than you would expect. Whereas um, this year June was just a little bit more than expected within the realms of what we would normally think of as a pretty normal June but uh, slightly more so I'm pretty pleased with that. And in fact this whole year has been quite consistent uh, sitting within that plus or minus one standard deviation in fact. Our consumption level for June was a little bit down on what we would normally expect as well because as I said we went away for a week which meant our baseline was a little bit lower 214.6 kilowatt hours compared to 240 last month. We used the EV quite a bit less as well 44 uh, and a bit kilowatt hours compared to about 80 the previous month. Our um, air to air, our uh, heating and air conditioning system we actually used 11.42 kilowatt hours which was a little bit higher than, than last month because we actually used the air conditioning for a couple of days when it got really hot uh, in June as you may remember. Um, our hot water was down as well at 90 kilowatt hours compared to about 130 last month again mostly because we were away for a week. And of course we don't use the dehumidifiers or the towel rails at this time of year so those were zero um, which gives us, a, gives us a grand total of 360 kilowatt hours which is um, a fair bit lower than um, the last few months. But you can see it's a little bit 
lower, but not a million miles off of what we um, consumed last June, as you can see in this stack just here. So how's my rule of thumb working out? I uh, estimated that Intelligent Flux would be the best tariff for us for most of the summer. Uh, and up until now, I think I've been pretty spot on with that. This is my rule of thumb estimate um, in the blue bars here. I was expecting to get about £105. What actually turned out to happen was that I ended up with about £97, not a million miles off, and actually still the best of the um, options. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with the choice that I made. Intelligent Flux definitely gave us the best return. Uh, if we had been on Intelli Intelligent Go, my estimate was that we would get £75 from my rule of thumb. But in actual fact, because of the way that Octopus have been controlling our battery, charging it quite a lot overnight, and then exporting quite a lot during the day, um, we would have actually got um, a fair bit more from Intelligent Go if we'd been on that tariff. and done the same sort of pattern ourselves if we charged charged up the battery ourselves and then force exported it during the 4 till 7 period even though we would only be getting 15 pence instead of best part of 26 or 27 pence for intelligent flux you can see it's not a million miles off 85 pounds we would have got which is a bit more than what we estimated at 75 pounds because what i'm assuming with my rule of thumb is that you're only force exporting about one day's worth of power where whereas we've got quite a big battery which means we can actually force export more than one typical day's worth of consumption, which allows us actually to earn more from Intelligent Go than um, my rule of thumb would suggest. The other tariffs, um, Go and Cozy and uh, Flux, all about what I would estimate. Um, and more importantly, um, you know, the the uh, rank ordering is still not too, too far off. Um, I estimated that uh, Intelligent Flux would be the best, followed by Flux and then Intelligent Go, whereas what actually happened is Intelligent Flux was indeed the best, but Intelligent Go worked out better than regular Flux in uh, for my particular setup. If you've got a slightly smaller battery, I imagine these two would be a bit uh, closer together. But that just goes to show if you've got a nice big battery, then Intelligent Go can work out well for you if you're prepared to force export a good chunk of that battery. Charge up your battery all the way overnight during that cheap, super cheap period, and then force export your battery um, in the early evening before the new super cheap period starts again at half 11. And the main reason that we had such a good intelligent flux uh, payout this month is because our ratio of generation to consumption was extremely high, 2.23 in this particular month. And part of the reason that our generation to consumption ratio was so high is that we went away for a week, which meant our consumption was pretty low. So taking a quick look at my rule of thumb chart, of course this is using the prices from June rather than the new updated ones from July. I'll be issuing an updated um, version of this for the July prices, so keep your eyes open for that. I'll be doing that pretty soon. But you can see actually our generation to consumption ratio of um, over two is literally off the charts. But this chart just confirms that for us, for the month of June, Intelligent Flux was indeed the best choice. And finally, let's take a look at what we saved in June. You can see that that bill of minus £97.45 was the best so far this year. Not quite as good as last year at minus £129.31, but that's partly because the prices were a lot higher, um, not only the import, but also the export, which meant because we were exporting a lot last June, we uh, actually made quite a bit of money because of the high prices. Um, but we're still pretty happy with £97 uh, paid out to us. And that combined with what we would have paid given... Uh, if we'd been on uh, gas and had uh, a petrol car instead of an EV and all that other stuff, it would have cost us £106, which gives us a grand total saving of £204 for this month, which is nice and stable compared to last month. And I'm expecting it to be pretty similar, maybe a little bit down uh, in July. So we'll see how that turns out, because obviously the prices have gone down a little bit. So that's it for June 2024. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll catch you in the next one.